Welcome, everybody. We are going to be working on the next lesson in Unit 2, which focuses on classes and inheritance. And you can see that I have the uh, teacher's guide open here to page 42. Uh, there's not a lot of material here, so a lot of it is like really in the doing uh, and working through the playgrounds. But there is this, this keynote, and I am going to bring this up um, really for the lack of the content that's actually in the book, right? Um, you can see what the topics are for this particular unit. We are going to talk about uh, what classes are. We're going to look at this concept of inheritance. Um, a lot of the terminology that goes with it, by the way, um, and how that differs from a structure, um, you know, where a structure is really, really similar to a class. So it's not like that much different, but they do behave differently and they have different capabilities and features. Uh, which is why we do it separately. The concept of objects and classes and inheritance does transfer to every other programming language that supports these features. So they're not uh, unique or new to a Swift, um, but it is helpful to know how to use them in Swift so you can make the most out of them. All right, so I'm gonna bring up this keynote here and they, they start talking about kind of how a, a class structure works. And we start by just looking at the keyword of class and how you build a class. So if you look at this slide here, and I will make it just ever so slightly bigger. Oops, and there we go. It doesn't look like it likes it too much, but that, you know, I just think it looks a little better that way. Um, but basically we do have data properties or fields that we include. So right up here at the top, we do see that we have uh, this class called person. And notice here the capital P, right? So when we name classes, we usually start them with capital letters. Um, all of it's enclosed with uh, curly brackets. Our data properties usually appear at the top and there's one here of the name, which is a string. You notice it's not preset, it, it, but it will get set at some point. Next, this little block of code here, whenever we see that keyword in it, that's what we call our constructor or initialization function that's built into the class structure, meaning when we create a copy of this, this function runs. Um, and of course, it's expecting to receive a string and then whatever, and I, and I apologize here, I want to go back, but whatever... Oh, gosh. All right. So I, I guess I'm going to have to back out and go back in. You can't go backwards in that keynote because it's right off the book. But whatever you pass in as a string is going to end up in this spot here, which then gets assigned to the object. And self is a way in Swift that we have, you know, basically a self-referring construct. So, you know, which person this person, the one that you're inside of, basically. Um, other languages will use different keywords here. Python also uses the self keyword, uh, but most other languages use the keyword this, if you're trying to make a comparison to other like C style languages like uh, Java, for example. All right, so you do have what we call the constructor function, and I'm not sure if Apple calls it that, but this is the function that runs when we create the object and we have to apply a name to it to construct. The other thing that a class can carry are, are what we call methods, which are functions inside of the, the object that perform certain tasks because um, it makes sense for them too, right? And, and in this case, they have a simple one called say hello um, that carries with the object that's created. All right, so if you look down here and you see how it's put together, Right, we have uh, we're creating a constant named person lowercase p. Right, so this would be this could be any name at all. So it could be Joe, for example, or wh whoever. Um, on the other side of the equal sign, we do call the class. So we call the class with parentheses, and then notice inside the parentheses, we're feeding in the constructor information that's required. In this case, it requires a string with a name to make it unique. So once we have done this thing, the name is stored inside of it. And then to retrieve the name, we just use dot syntax. We call the object name person dot name. It reaches in there, reads it, and it'll say Jasmine. So it'll print out Jasmine. The other thing that we can do is we can use that dot syntax again to trigger a function. Notice the difference between name, which we think of more as a property or a data field, right? No parentheses after it 
say hello is a function. So we put parentheses after it uh, to make it execute, right? In this case, this function doesn't require any parameters. It just operates and it just puts hello there on the screen. So that, that's a basic uh, class structure. Now we're gonna start also learning about this concept of inheritance. And that is when you've developed one class structure that has certain features and capabilities, you can create subclasses based upon that class that will capture all of those features, but add more to it, right? And we call this inheritance. And a really good e example, you know, uh, of inheritance is thinking of a parent and child, right? And we often use that terminology too. Um, like for example, a lot of parents will know like, hey, when you have children and you look at them, it's really easy to tell by looking at a child. Though. Like, yeah, that's definitely my kid, <laughs> right? Why? Because that kid may have some of your features. You might, might have the same hair, the same body type, um, the same eye color, whatever, you know, whatever the little details of your, your genetic traits are, are embedded into that child. However, they are their own unique person. They're just inheriting some of your features, right? Um, and this is all done through DNA. But we use, you know, basically this, this concept to kind of build... Um, terminology and and let me just kind of follow through so you, you see where i'm going with this so a base class might be a class that contains all things that have wheels right and we call those vehicles so like what does a vehicle have that makes it unique well number of wheels is a big one right so like two wheels four wheels whatever right when we have um a, a super class um such as bicycle um, that is a type of vehicle. So it could, so in other words, bicycle could be um, something that inherits from vehicle. What does it inherit? Wheels, maybe, maybe just wheels, right? And then we have a different type of bicycle that's called a tandem bike. And what makes that different from a regular bike? It has two seats, right? That's the big thing and two sets of pedals and a longer chain, a bigger frame, you know, it makes it a little bit different, but it's still a bicycle. And a bicycle is still a vehicle. So that's kind of like the, the follow through on that. So if you were to do, like, for example, um, coming up with like, like a base class, you know, if you're going to build this as a thing, here they're defining a vehicle as something that has the capability of moving. So it has a speed. Its current speed is zero, right? It also has a description. Um, and this is, um, once again, a, a property um, that we're setting, right? And you notice how we're doing this. So we're setting it as a variable and inside curly brackets, we're assigning it the string right off the bat. So traveling at current speed, and this incorporates the other piece of data. And then of course we have a function that's built in as well. Okay, and if you wanna create one, you just call upon vehicle. Notice this one does not have an init function. So you can actually create one just by saying vehicle parentheses and it will create. It's not expecting a string to create it. And then when we go to print it out, it will take that and print a description. And of course, in this case, it'd be traveling at zero miles per hour because we haven't changed that, right? So that's just kind of a, a definition. Now, once we've created what we call a base class, and, and really don't, you don't even have to put that term on it, just a class that then can be used to help build other classes we use this special syntax here to extend a class. So if I'm building a new class and I want it to inherit all the capabilities of some other class, I use a colon and then list that class here. In the case of a bicycle where we have a tangible example, a bicycle is a type of vehicle. So all the capabilities of vehicle will be included in bicycle, even though they're not listed, right? So the current speed, the description of the functions, all of it. And then you would add whatever, whatever makes it unique. Like a bicycle might have a basket or might have pedals or whatever, you know? So that, that's kind of the, the concept there. But that colon is used to, to extend um, the class you're building with a class that already exists. We're taking all the capabilities of vehicle and they're part of bicycle. Um, if you do know other languages, right? So let's say you know Java or something like that. Like in Java, what we say is whatever your class name is, we use the keyword extends 
and then the then the super class that we're pulling from with swift we name our class we use a colon and then the class that we're pulling from right and then notice we know their classes because they start with capital letters right that's a, a naming convention now if i go ahead and i make a bicycle i create one right once again blank constructor function and we know that um, we can change the property. So the bicycle has a property called has basket preset to false. Here, we're changing that property to true. But because the bicycle had the current speed thing from the vehicle, I can also set the speed because vehicle is built into bicycle. Kind of interesting, right? So then when we go and we print the bicycle description, it will find the current speed uh, and do the description thing, which is also technically part of vehicle, not really part of bicycle, but it becomes part of bicycle when we create it. And I think that, you know, if you're wrapping your head around that part of it, that's really kind of the, the crux of what we're doing here. Now we can take it further. So I can have this vehicle base class, and then I have a super class of bicycle, right? And then we have a subclass of tandem. So we're defining a new class called tandem it extends bicycle keep in mind bicycle extends vehicle so tandem contains not only what bicycle has but what vehicle has too we're just adding another property which is the current number of passengers and of course we have two seats two handles and all that stuff on a bike right and so you can expand that right so you create it has a basket sure you can set it to true you can set the current number of passengers the speed the description some of that comes from the bicycle class, some comes from the vehicle class, and then the basket or current number of passengers comes from the tandem class. But you can use all of those. So we're inheriting from all of them. And I think that that's pretty uh, important. All right. So the next thing that we have is this concept of what we call override methods and properties. And um, in this case, you'll notice the train is also a type of vehicle. So whatever features vehicle had, train has too. And then we have what we call an override function, which means that this will take precedence over other ones. But when we call this function to make noise, it just says choo-choo, right? So it just whatever. Um, this is a really good example of an override. But when we are working with overrides, basically what happens is the override takes precedence over the stuff that's already existing. So in the previous example, the make noise function is kind of, we don't really need to override it because none of the super classes have their own functions called the same thing. Here, when we do a car, a car is inheriting from vehicle and we want it to um, have a description. Vehicle already has a description thing built in. So in order for me to use the one that comes here with the car, I have to override uh, this. And then notice how we do it, right? So like it's a variable we're describing, it's a string. And then when we call it, we go to the super class, which is vehicle, right? And then we push that in. So when we call description inside of car, it allows us to basically feed in a, a string internally here to populate the description so we're overriding what normally would happen right normally what would happen is it would display the current speed right that's what the description does we're overriding it to make it display which gear we're in right so we're overriding the one in the super this is a little weird to do and, and like doing it makes more sense than kind of seeing it so if like you create this car and you set the current speed to 25, that's normally what's in the description, right? We say car gear three, when we do car dot description, which one is it pulling from? Uh, this, this is where it gets weird. Well, in this case, what's actually happening is we go to the super class, right? When we call description, it finds this, we go to the super class, pull in the one with the current speed and then add to it, which gear we're in. It's kind of kind of an interesting thing. They both have the same name, but the localized one in car does something a little bit different than the one in the super class above it. Um, and we do have um, what we call an override initializer. 
right? So like when we're, um, you know, instantiating a, a, a person, right? So the, once again, again, the person class, they have a name. We have the, the constructor function here, the init function. And then when we go to create a new class a student, right? Which extends the person class, we can add something to it. But notice that this class has no initializers. This is kind of the point. So it doesn't have an init function, right? So what we can do is we can build that in and add it. And so when we're creating a student, we can grab the name. Now think about how this works here. Student doesn't have a name, but it's part of person. So it, it populates it up here, right? And then a favorite subject, well, that appears inside a student. And so when we say, what's the favorite subject, it's the one that we will feed in, right? And then we can do this, uh, this what we call a super init, which it initializes the name into the super class structure to create the student. And I know this is kind of fuzzy too. Doing it makes, makes it do a lot more sense, like when you get to actually coding this. So, all right, so here's some, some things here. Um, that you might just want to keep in mind. So when you create an instance of a class, Swift returns the address of that instance. So the returned address is assigned to the variable. So this is kind of interesting. So it's not actually storing the object. It's making a reference in memory to the object. This is very different than storing it and putting it in a box. If you think of a variable as a box. Um, when you assign the address of an instance to multiple variables, each variable contains, contains the same address. So if you update one of those instances, all the variables refer to the updated instance. This is really kind of a bizarre feature. This is a hard one to wrap your head around, especially if you're new to programming. But if you've had experience with object-oriented programming and classes and objects and inheritance, this will probably resonate a little bit with you. But um, I'll tell you, like even if I had a student who went through my Java class, and I said this to them, they would they would probably still not get it. It takes a little while to understand this one. Um, but this is how often object-oriented languages work because when you create an object, the last thing you want to do is create an object that exists multiple times that's the exact same object. That doesn't make sense, right? It's like having, like cloning two of you, right? With the same name and so, same social security number makes no sense. So if I create an instance that has all the same properties, they refer to the same spot in memory. Um, that's probably the best way I can say it. Okay, so that's that's the book content. And that's a good underpinning for where we're about to go next. So we are gonna start um, working on the playground next. And I think I, I do have it open. So I'm just gonna move uh, the book out of the way. And I do have um, the classes playground open from unit two. All right, so we're going to start plowing through this. This only has four pages, but some pretty weighty work in here and actually quite a bit of code uh, to type in. So I'm going to try to make this somewhat large here. Uh, I'll get my books thing out of the way too. All right, so it says uh, here at the top as we begin, it says the exercises below are based on a game where a spaceship avoids obstacles in space. The ship is positioned at the bottom of a coordinate system and can only move left and right. You know, so you can like imagine whatever video game you want here. I'm thinking like Space Invaders or something, right? While obstacles fall from top to bottom. Well, that's kind of kind of like Space Invaders. Throughout the exercises, you'll create classes to represent different types of spaceships that can be used in the game. So kind of a, a, a tangible-ish real world example. All right. Now, one of the first things that we have to do here uh, is this, it says create a spaceship class with three variable property, name, health, and position. The default value of name should be empty, health should be zero, position should be an int where negative numbers place the ship further to the left and positive numbers place the ship further to the right. All right, the default value of position should be zero. So let, let's create just the, the beginning part of this, right? So this is um, where we're gonna start with this. So, Let's just define a class. I'm just gonna click in here and use the keyword class. We're gonna call this spaceship, okay? Then we do our curly brackets. 
and then we'll get our three properties in there. And they, they, we were told to make them all variables. So the first one was the name. This will be a string. Spell it right though. Not a sting, but a string. And we're gonna preset this to blank. Why? Because they told us to, empty string. Then we're gonna do health. So we're gonna say bar health. And we're gonna set this to 100, right? So like have, you start out alive and 100% health. Uh, ideally. Then we'll do position. And if you can kind of picture a, a video game where your spaceship's in the middle of the bottom of the screen, you go left to right, left is negative, right is positive. You probably want to start at position zero in the middle. In fact, they told us to do that. So zero is probably our middle point on the screen, right? So there's our, those, those are our, our defaults. All right. Let's see if it asks us to do anything else here. Um, it says create, create a let constant called Falcon and assign it to an instance of spaceship. After initialization, set the name to Falcon. All right, so in other words, we're not gonna preset the value. We're gonna do it after the fact. So this is how you would do it. I'm just gonna say let Falcon equal spaceship. Now, if you remember from the little keynote thing I was doing, um, when we don't have an init function, this will just automatically create one. It just kind of it assumes that there is one. It builds the object with the three properties we've designated set the way that we have them, right? But they did say to take that Falcon that we just created and take its name property and actually set it to be the word falcon. How intuitive. All right, so first we create a variable to hold it, and then we actually change the name. And of course, um, you know, if we're gonna print it, of course you could print falcon name if you want. So if you if you want to do that just to prove to yourself that it's it's actually working, you can do that. So you can do falcon.name and then you should see that at the bottom. Right, the print step, once again, is very, very optional. All right, so the next thing it says is go back and add a method called move left, right? Um, and this method should adjust the position of the spaceship to the left by one, add a similar method called move right that moves the spaceship to the right. Once these method methods exist, use them to move the falcon to the left twice and to the right once, and then print the new position after the change. All right, so let, let's do this is actually not too hard. So we're gonna come back up to the class structure here. We're gonna add a func. So here's our function definition, and we're gonna call it move right. We are putting parentheses after it and then open close curly bracket. So all we're going to do with this is if we're moving to the left, we are going to change the position by one or by we're going to subtract one. So what we're just going to do minus equals one. We're just subtracting one from it. That's all it move, move. Okay, I said move right, but I meant move left. Okay, that's just left. Why left? Because if you think of a, a number line and you put zero in the middle, if you go to the left, it's negative. If you go to the right, it's positive. That's why. Right. So just wanted to make sense. Let's do a move right. Very similar. So move right, parentheses, curly brackets, and same code with different math. We're just going to plus equals one. Moving it to the right, adding one to the position. So next it says to, to do some maneuvers, right? So what we'll start with is, let's see where we're sitting right now. So we're gonna start with falcon.position. So we're just reading the property and you will notice that currently it sits at position zero, 
because that's where, where we set it. Right? Then we're going to say uh, falcon dot move left. And you know what? It might be handy, and, and this is what I'm doing. So every time I make a move, I'm going to print it back to the screen. So I moved left. So now my position is minus one, right? Um, they want us to move left again. So I'm just do falcon. Oops, dot move left. And then let's print the position again. Now it should be minus two. Then they ask us to move to the right. So we're going to move right. And then when we print again, now we should be back to minus one. And you can put as many maneuvers in here as you want. It doesn't really matter. You can go left, you can go right. The, the bottom line is where did you end up? Why is this relevant, right? So think if you're playing a video game and you're pressing the button on a keyboard or a screen, and let's say you're either your tap or your button press moves you left, right? And then it keeps you in that spot. And the more you push, push left, the more left you go, the more you push right, right you go. But it is kept track of, and then that positioning is used to show it on the screen as well. All right, so that was part one. It says the last thing your spaceship needs for this example is a method to handle what happens if the ship gets hit. Go back and add a method was hit to the spaceship that will decrement the ship's health by five and then if health is less than or equal to zero, it'll print, sorry, your ship was hit one too many times. Do you want to play again? So in other words, it's keeping track of the fact that you have no, you know, health left on your ship. Um, all right, but let, let's create the function first. So we're going to come back up top here to the class and add the function. They want us to call that function was hit. So here comes func was hit in camel case parentheses and then curly brackets. Right. So if the ship was hit, let's say, you know, they got they took rocket fire or something, health will minus equal five. So we're gonna subtract the health five from the health. Then we're just gonna do a simple if statement. We're gonna say if health is less than or equal to zero, please. We're just going to print out a message and say, say, uh, sorry, your ship was hit one too many times. Want to play again. That's what it said. That we should say. There you go. Or you could have maybe like a wham, wham, wham sound. <laughs> You know, throw up an animation. You can do any any stuff you want, right? But we're we're keeping it simple here. So it was hit. If the health drops below, gets to zero or is below zero, uh, they're basically functionally dead. Now, of course, we're gonna have to test this, right? So way at the bottom, and you can do this anywhere, but the, this is where they want you to do it. We can say Falcon dot was hit, and then we would print. Uh, basically the falcon health and you should see now that it went down to 95 and of course you know if you're like actively playing a game and people are shooting at you you might get hit you might get hit you might get hit you might get hit and then you can you can print once again the falcon health so here you see that we're down to 75. And what I'm trying to do here, right, is I'm gonna, and you don't have to take your example this far, by the way, but will it at some point reach zero, right? So here, let's, uh, let's add the print statement here at the end, see where we're at. So we're at 35, so 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, Five, zero. So I think if I add all these, we will be down to zero. We'll print that out and see if we are. Okay, so we're, we are down to zero. Notice down on the console, because we hit zero, sorry, your ship was hit one too many times. 
Do you want to play again? Okay, so it's working, right? Our if statement's working and our code is working. You doing okay on this? Yep, doing okay. Okay, great. All right, and you can try all the, the different maneuvers, but um, this is kind of what happens in the background, right? So we don't have to sit there and decrease the health manually. We don't have to sit there um, and put up an error message once we reach that threshold that's built right into the object. All right, let's move on to the next page. All right. So now we're gonna create a subclass. Um, and remember a subclass will ultimately inherit um, from the superclass. All right, so let's read what it says. It says the exercises below are based on the spaceship thing, okay. The ship is positioned at the bottom of coordinate system. Um, all right, so we know the, the basic lay of the land here, I think, right? So here is the code that we should have created on the previous page, which we did. But now they're asking us, you know, using the same code here to define a new class called fighter that inherits from spaceship. So part of this is just learning how to do the inheritance. So we will use the class keyword and we will do fighter like so. And then to inherit from a, a super class, we just call the super class after we put in a colon. So we say class fighter, that's a new class, colon spaceship, meaning it's extending or inheriting from spaceship. So now fighter automatically has all of this stuff is built into it, right? So I don't have to recreate it here. It has a name, health, position, a move left, move right, and a was hit with the error message all built in. Right. Fighter will have um, some new properties. So we're going to have a variable property called weapon that defaults to an empty string and a variable property uh, remaining firepower that defaults to five. So let's create those. Let's uh, get a var for weapon. And we're going to set that to an empty string. Okay. And then another var called remaining fire power, like so. And they want us to keep that at five. So there's our new class with the two, two new properties. So when I create a fighter, it will have all of this and the two new properties built in. All right, so now it says, go ahead and create a new instance of fighter called destroyer. All right, so we're gonna actually create one. Let's just do that step first. So we're gonna do let destroyer equal fighter. So this will create the fighter object. And then we're gonna set some of its properties. And so if you read through this paragraph above, I'm, I'm just gonna make the maneuvers that they're talking about. So first we're gonna say destroyer.weapon and we're gonna arm it with a laser. Then we will set its remaining firepower to 10. And we'll set its name. And um, maybe we can call this destroy with a capital D. So we know it's doing something. There it is. All right. Now, we're, we're setting these three manually, right? And we can eventually take a look at these. But for right now, let's take a look at where destroyer is positioned. So I'm just going to do a print statement and say destroyer dot position, right? And you notice here, as I drop that in, you know, position is not part of fighter, but it is part of spaceship and its default is zero. So down here, that it comes up with a zero is correct, right? Then of course, uh, let's make sure we can move it around so we can just do destroyer dot 
move. No matter which way, we can just move it right. And then of course we can check that position again. So I'm just gonna copy paste this in. And then you should see that it's one to the right yet and it's set to one now. So that is, that's working. Next thing that they're asking us to do is, it, it's kind of weird, right? It's just saying, try to print weapon on Falcon. Why doesn't this work? All right, so let, let, let's try it first. So here's, here's the attempt. So I'm gonna do Falcon. Why is this not printing? Well, we have an error message that says, can't find Falcon in scope. All right, let, let's go take a look as to why, right? So here we created a spaceship and then we created a fighter, which is based on spaceship, right? So this is super class, subclass, you know, you can think of it as a base class uh, if you wish, whatever, but we never created anything called Falcon, right? So that's why it doesn't work. Falcon was the name we used on the previous page Right. So if you want to like write down a description here, it's like this isn't going to print, you know, and I would comment this out because we're getting an error, but I might add a comment here, something to the effect of this won't this won't um, let's say print because we never instantiated if you want the proper English on it, or never created, if you will, um, an object called Falcon, right? So, you know, now if we did, right? So for example, if I would have like named this Falcon up here, this would have worked. If, for example, down here, I do decide to print something and I say, well, I created destroyer, so I could print destroyer dot weapon. That will actually output, right? Because we are we set that one. That that's really kind of the, the difference. Right. They want us to add one more method. All right, and they, they want us to call it fire. This should check to see if the remaining firepower is greater than zero, and if so should decrement the firepower by one. If remaining fire, firepower is not greater than zero, then print, you have no more firepower. Call it a few times and then print after each method call so we can see that it's actually diminishing. All right, so let's start by creating this. Um, so I'm gonna go back up here and it wants us to add this to the fighter class. So this will only be available, available in fighters, right? You don't want to, um, give a you know a passenger vessel the ability to fire for example right. well you could. you could you could make it interesting i guess right all right so let's do that we're going to create a funk we're going to call it fire parentheses and curly brackets right so we're just going to run an if statement here if you think about what what the description was so we're going to say if the remaining firepower is greater than zero, then we will allow it to decrement the remaining firepower by one. So we're just gonna do minus equals one every time they fire. Otherwise, or else, maybe that should have been the keyword. Otherwise, right, we're just gonna print out a message, right? So the only reason this is going to print is if we get below zero, basically, or get to zero. We're going to just say, uh, you have no more firepower. No more firepower is probably enough, right? So now that we've created this function here under fighter, now we're going to come down here and try to run it uh, several times. All right, and we already have destroyer created. So now we're just going to um, call destroyer and the fire function or method, right? And you know what, let's, let's run it a couple of times because right now it's at five, right? So we'll 
run that a couple of times, and then we'll just simply print it. So we'll print. And what are we printing? We're printing the destroyer remaining firepower. And so I, I was at 10. I fired twice. Now I'm down to eight. And then really what they want us to do at least a couple of times is fire some more, take a look, went down to seven, fire again, went down to six. And then of course we can fire a bunch of times. We should probably test it going to zero. So I'm just gonna insert a few here, basically. Oops, do it here. Fire, fire, fire. Now we're down to three, fire, fire. We're down to one, one more time. There it is. And is it outputting anything to the console? Oh gosh, I don't think my message is, is hitting. So if, how should that work? Let's just check it out. If the remaining firepower is greater than zero, subtract one. Otherwise we should print, you have no more firepower. I'm not really seeing that that's happening. Did we reach? When we reach zero, so I, I'm tempted to run it again. Well, there it is, no more firepower. All right, so I have to do it one more time and then it reached it. All right, that's just a test to make sure it works. All good on this? Yep, good. Excellent, all right, let's move on. All right, so uh, the next uh, slide talks about uh, this override thing that we were just starting to kind of briefly look at. Uh, you can see that they already have our whole class structure here for spaceship and for fighter. Um, so all the stuff that we should have done before is all right here, right? So that's all set to go. Um, all right, so this is given, but now they're asking us to do this. It says define a new class shielded ship that inherits from fighter and add a variable property shield strength that defaults to 25 create a new instance called defender set name to defender and weapon to cannon move right print position fire and then print so we got a very specific set of instructions here All right but let, let's start with the class definition first so once again um you know if you want to think of this as our base class and this could be our super class, but now we're going to create a subclass called shielded ship. So class, i.e. shielded ship, which will inherit from fighter, which inherits from spaceship. Um, they want us to add a variable property called Shield strength. And we're going to set that to 25 because they told us to. Right. Then we're going to build a, a function here um, that's going to be override. So, in, and actually, um, they don't actually didn't ask us to do that yet, right? So they said add a variable property, create a new instance, set the name, weapon, move position okay so we're not adding the override method yet okay so i'm just looking at that on the other screen so we're going to leave it at that for right now so let's just go ahead and um instantiate it a few times and see what happens and then we'll come back and we'll add code so we'll do that right here so i'm just going to say let defender equal shielded ship correct we're going to take Defender and we're going to set its name to equal Defender with a capital D. Then we'll set its weapon to be cannon. And then they asked us to take Defender and move it to the right, all right, and then print the position. So let's see what its position is. 
So uh, we're going to say defender dot position. And, and you know, I'm being real goofy about this because he told us to print it, right? So print under dot position. Well, let's see what it says. One is correct because we moved one to the right. Now you could uh, also, by the way, if you want to make sure the other stuff stuck, you could say defender dot name or, you know, do print on it, you know, but, all right. So maybe we'll just do it as print. This is just to drive home the fact that we're maintaining all this stuff still, right? And it doesn't work, of course, because I misspelled it, but you can fix that, right? So there it is, Defender. And you can, you know, look at any of the properties you want. But, so if I say weapon, you'll see cannon, uh, et cetera. All right. They do also want us to fire our weapon. So I'm just going to say defender dot fire, right? And then we should see the remaining firepower depleted. So we're going to say print defender dot remaining firepower. And then what we should see there is four because it diminished by one. And so if I fire, obviously, a couple of times, right? Then you'll see that firepower diminish. Okay, very, very simple, but it shows us that we created a shielded ship, which was uh, a subclass to the superclass fighter. Fighter is a subclass to the superclass spaceship, right? each one inheriting from the previous. So even though we created a shielded ship, it still has all of this stuff available. It still has all of this stuff available and whatever new stuff we added here. And just That's just to kind of reinforce the concept of what we're doing. Now, it does want us to kind of ramp this up a little bit more and it says, go back to the declaration of shielded ship and override was hit in the body of the method to check to see if sealed shield strength is greater than zero. If it is decrement it by five, otherwise decrement health by five in call was hit on defender and print out both of those. Okay. So the, the point of this is we already have a function here called was hit. So if I called this as it is right now, that's the one that's going to call. However, if I want to create one with the same name here that would take precedence, I would um, you need to use the override to declare it. So here's, here's how you do that. You just say override. It's two hours, by the way. Uh, and then we have a func. We use the same name. Same exact name was hit. And then we put in our code. Now, they had very specific instructions, which basically said you should do this. So if you just want to copy if so if the shield strength is greater than zero then we're supposed to set the shield strength to reduce by five right so every time they're hit the shield level drops right and, it, and it'll keep dropping right the more you get hit um, and if it's not greater than five then what's going to take your hit is going to be your health. But this is really clever how the way they're doing it. So instead of like rewriting the code that's already present, we're going to pull the code from the super class, right? Which diminishes um, your health. So every time, so in other words, if you run out of shields, then it's your health that gets hit up here. But it, it, but it draws from up here, the super class version, the non overrided version. So we're both overriding the functionality of the default. And then if it doesn't meet certain criteria, we can go back to the super class and just utilize it. So this is really, really powerful and useful stuff here, you guys. Um, may, and maybe you, you, you don't feel it at this point, but you'll, when you see it in action, I think it helps. All right, so let, let's give this a try. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say defender that was hit. And then they want us to print out both um, defenders. 
Let's do shield strength first. Let's see if the shields diminished and they did, they're down to 25. And then also let's take a look at, and we'll do this again, we'll just print under dot health. Here, the health is intact because the shields took the hit, right? So if I wanna really test this some more, what I could do is I could take a couple more hits and then show these again. So reprint these, so more hits were made. See the shields going down, right? If I repeat this whole process, take a couple more hits, now we're down to zero. Take a couple more hits, and now we're down, now the health, now we have no shields left, so the hits are taking it off of our health, right? Now, if you think about this, you know, like the video games that you play, and, you know, you're getting shot and you're shooting and you got shields and health indicators and they're usually all on the bottom of your screen if you're playing like a first person shooter. I mean, this is kind of how the stuff works, right? And what algorithms they're using in the background, we really don't know, you know? Um, but on a very simplistic level, this could be the logic behind a video game, right? So like, hey, if you have shields, you don't take a hit to your health. If you don't have shields, well, then your health takes a hit and eventually you die, right? Or the ship blows up or, you know, whatever it is. Um, all right, so I think that's a pretty good example of, of that. Um, and, I, and I think where they go next, and it says when the shield strength is zero, um, all was hit does decrement, and that's exactly what we're, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we already did this step, right? Um, so instead of decrementing the health directly, we already did this. Um, and, you know, um, so, you know, basically it's already done, right? And the whole point was this part wasn't there originally. They wanted us to add that. I just did it all at once because I was looking at the finished code to do it. So, all right, let's move on to the next one. This is the last of the slides in this um, playground. Once we're done with this, uh, playground we will uh, we will take a break by the way we don't have much left all right same uh, exercise set up here uh, so we do have the the class uh, spaceship with the left right was hit um, and we also have the fighter and the shielded thing uh, just the same thing that we already built all right now it says no each class above has an error by the class declaration declaration that says class has no initializer unlike structs classes do not come with member wise initializers meaning the things that help you auto fill things right doesn't automatically come with that um and the reason for that is because the standard initializers don't always play nicely with inheritance so in other words they're not always really elegant about looking back up the chain to find where the stuff is coming from Especially, think about this, if I have an overrided method, I mean, which one am I looking at? I mean, you know, that's where it gets kind of a little hairy. So you can get rid of some of the error by providing default values for everything, but it's common and better practice to simply write your own initializer. And that really is a preferred way in programming. Um, go to the declaration of spaceship and add an initializer function. And I often call these constructors because this is what we call it in Java and C languages. We call these constructors. Um, and then we are also going to allow this to take the properties in all individually. So I'm going to go back up here to spaceship. And, and normally the place that we place these initialization functions is right below the data fields or properties. So we have those listed first and then we put the initializer. So normally we place them here. This is just not a rule, but a convention, you know. Um, we don't have to name in it. We just do have to provide parentheses and curly brackets. So I like to do those first. All right, then inside here, we're gonna feed three pieces of information. Which three? Well, the same three that are on the properties list above. So. We're going to feed in a name, which is a string. 
and there's a comma there. Then we're going to feed in health, which is an, an int. And then we're going to feed in position, which is also an int. Right? Those are all counting numbers. Inside the function here, we're going to use the self-referring uh, thing. Or what, so in other words, we're going to say self.name. Which object's name? This one. The one that we're inside of. Right? It seems kind of silly when we're not even going to have one to work with. But we will take the name that's fed in and apply it to the object that we're in. We'll do the same thing with the other two. So we're going to say self.health equals health. And then we'll do self.position equals the position. All right. Now you'll notice just, just by virtue of doing that, creating that function, that, that error we were seeing up here, that went away. Right? That's gone. Right? So in other words, classes prefer to have these built in. That's what you know uh, it says. All right, so it says, go to this declaration of spaceship, add an initializer that takes an argument for each property and sets the properties accordingly. So we did that part. Then create an instance of spaceship below called Falcon and use the member wise initializer you just created. The ship's name should be Falcon. So the, the, the point of this really comes down to this, right? Now that we've added that initializer, when I type let Falcon equal spaceship you know so notice I, I can do it the old-fashioned way but it also comes up on the list here right with the stuff that i just created now if i hadn't created it's not that this wouldn't come up but it might not work correctly it, it's kind of the point so we'll name it falcon we'll set the health to 100 and the position to zero All right, so that, that's the first uh, example. All right, but then they go on and they say writing initializers for subclasses can get tricky. Your initializer needs not only set the properties on the subclass, but also set all of the uninitialized properties on the classes it inherits from. So go to the declaration of fighter and then write a initializer, right? Um, that takes an argument for each property on fighter and for each property on spaceship. So now we're gonna take the ones that we already have and more. So if I'm creating a fighter directly, we still need to populate the other fields from the super class. Um, and there's kind of like a little uh, clever little way to do it with the super init thing after you initialize all the properties on the subclass. So I'll, I'll show you what that means. So let's go back up here. So we're working on fighter. We are going to create an init. So here's the init function. So init ends curly brackets. Right. I like to get those out of the way. And then inside here, we're going to initialize first the stuff that is local. So we're, we'll look at weapon, and that is a string, which is the name. And then we'll look at remaining. Fire power. That is an int. Now we'll grab the other three, and you know they're going to be the same as they were before. So we can just, if you want, say a little typing, just copy them from here and paste them in down here. Right. So this addresses all the stuff in the super class. Right. It's telling me I have a unexpected no, okay i guess that went away never mind <laughs> all right now let's take the two that the two new ones that we're feeding in and let's assign them so we'll use the same technique as before we're just going to say self dot uh, weapon equals the weapon that we're sending to it self -direct. same thing for remaining firepower um we're just going to put in the remaining firepower we're sending in. Now, with the others, and this is what they were trying to explain, is we already have 
so so think about this when we create this we're going to be sending it we, we're going to call fighter to create and we're going to send in the weapon remaining firepower name health and position right in the constructor and here i could go ahead and i could say well i could assign these internally but there's nowhere internally to to assign them so then i have to look at the super class structure in other words the spaceship to assign them so you got to use that keyword so we're going to say super dot init so this init function is calling the other init function and if you still have that stuff in your buffer you can paste it in and it's not initializing to spaceship right and we're still going to use name health and position but we're not declaring what types they are. We're gonna send in the name that we just received, right? We're at, this is the actual data now. And then we're gonna send in the health we just received and the position that we just received. So I know it seems like redundant syntax, you know, but one's a variable name and one's the actual variable we're receiving, right? So, um, so this one ends up here and then this one goes up here this is really what's happening right but that but that's the lay of the land so we're in, inside here we're adding in it's for the two new ones we still have the three other ones to consider the two local ones are set to self the other ones are part of the super class so they're set like this with yeah the redundant names so that's our next step right okay um so let's see what did we finish the instructions here. Um, all right, so we did this part. Okay, then create an instance of fighter below called destroyer with all of those fields populated. So let's just do that. So we're gonna say let destroyer equal, so now we use fighter and parens. And I do wanna point out, notice that we can pull this in here. So I, I kind of prefer to use that approach. And now I can um, name everything. So I can laser, my remaining firepower is 10. The name is, uh, yes, destroyer. Spell it. Health um, will set to uh, whatever, 60. And position zero. Okay, so now we're, now we're creating that object, but it shows you that these are getting set within the fighter class and these are part of the super class. But we set them all at the same time. Now we're gonna go back to shielded ship and add an initializer there. And it says it takes the argument for each property, right? On shield ship, fighter and spaceship and sets the properties accordingly. And you can still use the super init feature and then we will create an instance and then try to create it. All right, so we're gonna do all those steps all at once. Ready? Um, we're gonna come back up here to shielded ship and then we will create the initializer for that one, which is gonna carry all the other stuff. All right, so let's add a couple lines here and do in it. Um, and notice, and this is kind of interesting because now you're noticing that this is pulling in already from fighter i'd be a fool not to grab it right i mean look at all the typing it just saved me <laughs> but we are going to add this into the mix too so right at the beginning i'm going to say shield strength that's going to be an integer like so that's the only one that we're adding to it then inside here, we still have to write some code. Um, so we're going to do the self thing. We're going to say self dot shield strength equals shield strength, right? The one that we're sending in. With all the other stuff, we can do a super dot in it. And notice how this is reading from the super class automatically. And now we just have to throw in the right stuff here. And yeah, this is where the redundant naming happens again. So we're going to do which weapon? The weapon we're sending in. Which firepower? The remaining firepower we're sending in. Which name? The name we're sending in. Which health? 
the health we're sending in and which position of position we're sending in. I know it, it, it's kind of redundant, but this is how it's done. All right. I'm noticing, oh, this is really interesting. It put in an override for me. I didn't do that. You guys catch up? So I'm going to remove the override because I don't need it. I don't know if yours did the same thing or not. It did. Yeah. Um, so apparently, like, it's thinking, oh, well, if you're in initializing this, you're overriding the other in it. Because when I started, I took the default. That's why. By taking the default, it put in override because you're doing it twice. By at making it unique and adding this to it, now it's not the same one, so we're not overriding it. All right. Last thing that we have left to do is to try this out basically by creating a version of it. So we'll just go way to the bottom and we're gonna say, let render equal, and this time we're gonna call it shielded ship with all of its capabilities and we're just gonna populate it. So you wanna put some numbers in, we'll do 20, um, cannon, right? That's what we were using before. Uh, meaning firepower. I'm just put, throwing numbers in here. The name's probably important. That we call it Defender. The health will set to, I don't know, 85. Uh, position, it, I mean, zero is ideal, but we could set it to minus one. It doesn't really matter. The point is that we now, with these initialization functions in place, can set values for properties all the way up to that super class structure, right? This is really, really common in programming, by the way, um, to do this. Um, they do have a, a, some additional task here for us, and then we will take a break once we finish this. It says create a new constant named same ship and set it equal to Falcon. All right, so let's do that. We're gonna create let same ship equal Falcon. Now, I want you to think about this. We already created Falcon as an object in memory. And if you remember, Falcon is um, just a spaceship. So it's got a name, health, and position, right? Now, if I print out Falcon's position, you can see it's at position zero. And then if I print the same ship dot position, that's also at zero. Because I mean, I, what I've just done really is I've taken one object and I've copied it into another. But here's the part that they were trying to point out in the keynote. Just because I made a copy of it doesn't mean they're in different spots of memory. When I copy an object in memory, I'm still referring to the same object. So if I take the same ship and I move it, you know, pick a direction, you know, move left, right? And then I just repeat these two commands, noticing I'm not moving Falcon, I'm moving same ship. But when I change and I look at their positions, See how both of the positions moved? Yeah, that doesn't make sense because we don't have two separate copies. We have two separate pointers. It's like kind of having like a road sign that says, you know, 90 miles to Chicago and another one over here that says 90 miles to Chicago. Chicago's in the same place, right? So if I move the one sign closer, well, the other sign's moving closer too. So we're copying a pointer to the position of the object, we're not really creating a new object here. And, and I know this is a little bit deep. Um, and if it's helpful, these are these are notes that the, the author put in. So I'm just gonna paste them on the screen. So for those of you watching like the video, you can kind of read this. And this is really kind of the technical explanation of it. I will tell you that when I first learned about objects and classes and this concept was thrown at me, Man, I totally didn't get it. It took me, I think, years to understand it. So if you guys even got a little bit of what I'm talking about just now, 
you were leaps and bounds ahead of where I was at when I first learned it. Right. Um, and, and I'm going to fault some of that basically on the fact that I think maybe the person teaching me didn't really understand it. You know, and I take that for granted. You just always assume that your teacher knows everything and that's not really the case, you know? And so I always, you know, say that you can, you can read up or expand your knowledge way beyond anything you get in the classroom. This is kind of an important concept, but when we are make, creating copies of objects and memories, we're not really creating a copy. We're pointing to the same object. If you want a new object, you don't copy Falcon because you're just pointing to the same memory location. You know, you want a new city of Chicago, find a new piece of land and start building, <laughs> you know, um, otherwise we're pointing to the same Chicago. You know, that, that's a good way to look at it. All right, let's take a break. Uh, we've been going for a bit here. Uh, let's make it about a 10 minute break. Uh, this video will be paused. Uh, okay. All right, folks, uh, that will wrap up our uh, classes uh, playground and I'm sorry I'm struggling on that because I forgot which one I was doing yeah we we're, were working on the classes playground and that will end this video I'm going to record a new video for the next playground so this video ends here <laughs>